Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. So, uh, after a surprisingly well-received uh, reception from uh, my last opinion piece regarding uh, the Sword Soul Structure deck and Yu-Gi-Oh! players evaluating decks, um, I actually was intending to post this video that you're watching now on that day. Uh, I just kind of felt impassioned to talk about that particular topic. But uh, this is also something that I really wanted to talk about while it was still relevant. Normally, we do this weekend Master Draw on Friday. Uh, I'm going to bump it back towards tomorrow, Saturday instead, uh, so that way I can talk a little bit about the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG ban list. Uh, now, just yesterday, at the day, as of the day this video is going out, uh, I believe was the last day for the Tryout Duel event on Master Duel, uh, which used the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG ban list. And the TCG community, uh, in particular, was quite excited for this. Uh, many players, uh, you know, were talking about how awesome it is to be able to play without... Max C, everyone's favorite Earth level 2 insect. And indeed, you know, I'm definitely someone who would agree that I would generally prefer to play without Max C. But one thing I noticed as I was kind of playing in the format and building for it, and also just looking at the list in general, is that while, of course, Max C being banned is a very, very good thing. I gotta say, there's a lot about the TCG list that I really don't like. Um, of course, there are some other good changes that are effective here that are not on the Master Duel list as well. So, uh, I want to talk about this a little bit today, about how I feel about the TCG list, things that are uh, work with it that I feel, uh, things that don't, and overall, why I think, and this might be a bit of a hot take, but... I think that I prefer playing under the Master Duel ban list, even if it has Max C. Now, of course, as always as ever, I gotta preface this by saying, this is an opinion piece. <laughs> this is my subjective take. Uh, if you would rather play on the TCG ban list, I don't think you're wrong for that. I'm not trying to say either list is better. Again, it's all going to come down to what style of meta you prefer to play in. And when it comes to the TCG, um... Well, we'll talk about it as we get into it, but uh, the TCG through its hits feels to me like it places some deck building restrictions that I'm not necessarily a fan of. But um, I'm going to do this kind of similarly to the way we did our looking at the Master Duel ban list video where we went through it and talked about what all the cards could be at, and whether I think they need to actually be hit or not, etc, etc. Um, but this time, I'm going to gloss through some of the hits, especially the ones that are the same between the TCG and Master Duel, uh, and talk about some of the differences. And actually, the first difference, Artifact Scythe here, um, I do have to say, this is actually something I do like, that the TCG list and the Master Duel list doesn't. So, uh, Artifact Scythe while it does go in a lot of pile decks, which I do tend to like, um, and pile decks and the existence of them are going to be kind of the crux of what I tend to focus on uh, in regards to what I tend not to like about the TCG list, I will say that Artifact Scythe being banned I do think is a good thing. Um, the engine, quote-unquote, the artifact engine, really a lot of times in pile decks is just Scythe and Dogda, maybe a Tech Lancia if it happens to be good in that meta, um, but it's really just adding pieces on to the end board, right? And it's also not as though Artifact is a deck that is really uh, played as its own archetype, or again, even as a thorough engine. Uh, and even when it is, it's not as if it necessarily lives or dies by the existence of Scythe. That is to say, Artifact Scythe being legal in Master Duel doesn't elevate Artifact as an archetype to the point where uh, it being banned makes the archetype irrelevant. The archetype is mostly irrelevant, um, it, and it's not played, um, and again, Scythe being around doesn't change that. So, given how Scythe is very restrictive, as far as obviously locking down some of the extra deck, it's a lingering effect, which is annoying to deal with. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is a pretty good ban here. So, I know I just said there's a lot of things I don't like about the TCG list, but uh, Scythe to Zero is definitely one of them. Uh, Fairy Tale Snow to Zero. I think I have kind of mixed feelings about this one. I can definitely understand it. I completely understand banning Fairy Tale Snow. The fact that it's once per turn, or not once per turn, rather, the fact that it's not once per turn is totally ridiculous. Uh, it acts as disruption, it can be an extender, it's often both at the same time, and it is really easy to get off for decks that put a lot of cards in the graveyard. 
that said, um, there was a lot of discourse in the Tier Limit format, in particular in Master Duel, as to why Fairy Tale Snow isn't banned. This card is obviously way too good. And not even just during the Tier Limit format, actually, in the meta right before, too, because in Master Duel, the Ashizu cards came out before the Tier Limit cards. So in that one season where it was, um, you know, the Ashizu cards were legal, but there were no Tier Limits in the game yet, there was still a bunch of uh, big Grass Mill decks that were using them, uh, as well as, you know, up to three copies a lot of the time of Fairy Tale Snow, because it is at three in Master Duel um, to banish Necro Faces and Mill, etc., etc. Um, I would argue that Necroface was the main problem of that deck, and that card getting hit has more or less solved it, as well as, of course, the Ashizu is getting hit as well. But that does leave the question of Fairy Tale Snow, right? Uh, Fairy Tale Snow right now doesn't really see a ton of play in Master Duel, uh, even in the current Grass Pile decks uh, that are big in the format, which is mostly branded. Um, you still don't see people playing Fairy Tale Snow just to get it in there uh, to get it milled. So. Um, I think that Fairy Tale Snow was more of a product of tier limit of those Ashizu decks, and I think it might actually be fine. That said, again, I can also completely understand Fairy Tale Snow being banned. Uh, this is one that I don't feel particularly strongly about, um, because I think kind of in a similar way to Artifact Scythe, even though these cards do very different things, similarly to Artifact Scythe, while Fairy Tale Snow does often get included in pile decks, I don't think it helps form the identity of them, nor do I think it necessarily that pile decks live or die by snow not being in the format so again i'll kind of concede that this one might actually be fine um but i'm mostly indifferent about whether this card is legal or not right now Okay, Ronin Toten. So Ronin Toten to zero is pretty interesting uh, because in Master Duel in the OCG, it's not Ronin Toten that's at zero, but rather it's the uh, Totally Awesome instead. Uh, whereas Totally Awesome is legal in the TCG while Ronin is banned. Now, one thing I've seen a lot of people say about Totally Awesome being banned in Master Duel is that it's Sprite Elf's fault. That if Sprite Elf were banned like it is in the TCG, then Totally Awesome could be legal. But I think that that is very disingenuous in forgetting the fact that Ronin is banned in the t uh, TCG, and that's kind of the main reason why Totally Awesome is fine, right? Um, it all, I think, comes back to like the sprite deck, the pure sprite deck that's utilizing the frog engine. Uh, in Master Duel, we had, sorry, I hit the desk there, geez, uh, as I was, uh, you know, just kind of hand gesturing to myself. Anyway, uh, in Master Duel, right, we had the uh, Totally Awesome that got pre-hit before sprites even came out. That card got banned. Um, because, really, when it comes to pure sprite uh, in particular, Swap, Ronin, and Totally can't really all exist at the same time. So who is actually the issue here? Is it Ronin Toten or is it Totally? I think this is one of those cases where it's less that one or the other is more of a problem and more that they can't coexist at the same time. Uh, again, there are some people who claim that if you simply ban Sprite Elf, then Totally can come back. I'm not convinced of that. Not without banning the Ronin Toten first. Uh, which do I prefer? Uh, I'm not sure, honestly, uh, mostly because I haven't really had the opportunity to play Sprite extensively with Totally, um, or really much at all, because again, Totally was pre-hit to zero before Sprites came into the game. So, uh, I think I actually kind of like Fairy Tale Snow, I don't feel particularly strongly. <laughs> This is good. I started this by saying, oh, there's so many things I don't like about the TCG list. And I'm like, this is fine. No strong feelings. No strong feelings. <laughs> um, but I think totally is probably just too good. I think between the two, in my honest opinion, totally awesome is the one that's more powerful. That said, I do really like that totally awesome enables a lot of uh, just water decks in general. Like, uh, even like shark decks using Bahamut to pull out totally. So... I think in terms of offering uh, just decks in general a new tool, maybe I do prefer Totally Awesome uh, being legal as opposed to the Ronin here. Okay, don't worry. With this roll, we're going to get into some of my more, uh, what some may see as hot takes, or rather me just uh, disagreeing with how the TCG list does things. Uh, for one, title still being banned is like, why? This card is fine. It can come back. Um... But I think a better example of the TCG just being really slow to unban things is Spiral Master Plan. Because um, here's the thing, right? Spirals are pretty much at full power in Master Duel, and they're totally fine. Like, 
they are good. I'm not saying they're bad or like they're underplayed or anything or overplayed or whatever. Um, I just think that the existence of Spiral is fine, and that includes Master Plan being legal. Um, now, I will say I'm not super familiar with Spiral as an archetype, so maybe there's a card that's hit in Master Duel uh, that makes it fine that I'm not aware of, but from what I've seen people say, from what I've heard and from what I can observe, it seems like Spiral is at full power. So why, why is Master Plan banned in the TCG? Um, there are some other examples that we're going to see of this very shortly, actually, um, but to me it seems that the TCG is often even more so than Master Duel or, I don't know, I haven't looked as extensively at the OCG, so I can say that for sure, but it seems to me that of the ban list, the TCG is the slowest to kind of unhit these cards that are, in, especially in today's meta, uh, totally fine. And I think Master Plan ends up being one of those. Again, uh, Spiral is good in Master Duel, but is it Tier 0? Is it Dominating Ladder? Is it the only thing topping tournaments? No, not at all. Not, not by any stretch of the imagination, so... Oh, Math Mech Circular. Okay, this is less, you know, the TCG is just slow to unhit things because this is a very recent hit and one that I do not like at all. And it's one, the first of um, what I'm going to show as many examples of, to me, the TCG just not really liking the fact that pile decks exist. And when it comes to me personally and what I value in a meta and particularly being able to deck build, I mean, you all know how much I love pile decks by this point, right? Uh, I'm always mashing archetypes together um, just to kind of see how they work. And oftentimes in the case of like, you know, Punk Sprite, for example, to some pretty good success. Um, but the thing is like, it seems to me that the TCG has a lot of hits here that, like, discourage um, the blending of archetypes together. Now, whether you think pile decks are, you know, fun or not, or uh, whether decks should be, you know, one archetype, again, that's totally subjective. And if you dislike the existence of pile decks um, because, you know, you think that they're too generic or whatever, again, that's totally valid. That's your opinion, and I, I don't think that that's something that, you know, I'm not saying you're wrong for that, not by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I'm just saying that that is something that I particularly very highly value. Um, I like mashing decks together. I, fr I frankly think that if every deck was only one archetype and like a handful of staples and only that deck's archetype, like, and that's all every Yu-Gi-Oh deck was, I probably wouldn't play Yu-Gi-Oh. I personally think that's really boring. Like, to me at that point, you know, at that, at, again, at that point, Konami is basically building your deck for you. It's like, ah, yes, my Blackwing deck with only cards with Blackwing in the text. Ah, here is another Blackwing card from Konami to add to my Blackwing deck with only cards with Blackwing in the text, you know? And again, if you enjoy that, I'm not saying you're wrong. That's totally valid. I just think that's boring. Uh, I like innovating and... Uh, picking out engines and parts of archetypes and again just mashing them together and seeing how well they work and when you actually get something that ends up being greater than the sum of its parts i think that's really cool so going back to mathematic circular and how this relates to that mathematic circular is of course played a lot in mathematic but also mathematic circular is generally just a good cybers engine as a whole and in that regard, it kind of allows cyber stacks to bleed into each other a lot. Um, Code Talker, in particular, it's called the deck is referred to as Code Talker, but really what it ends up being is a cyber pile. Um, Ignister often ends up being fairly similar, where it is mostly Ignister cards, but you still play a Math Mech engine. You still play a lot of Code Talker cards. Math Mech plays a small Code Talker package a lot of the time with Microcoder and Cyanide Conflict or a Firewall package. Again, these are all separate cybers archetypes, but they are able to blend together. Uh, and a lot of the reason for that is just the power of the Math Mech engine holding everything together. Um, now, one might argue that maybe Mathematic Circular is kind of like Block Dragon above it, right? Whereas some people would say that Block Dragon holds back the design of rock type monsters by making rock as a whole too good. You could make an argument that Circular does the same for Cybers as a whole. Um, I don't know, I personally just don't agree with this. I, again, I think it's really cool that this one engine is able to make so many different Cybers archetypes valid. Like, without Circular being in the format, 
uh, you know, what are cybersex do really doing without it? Um, and really, this is a thing, too, where that I don't like about this particular hit in the TCG is, from what I can see and gather from the way people are talking and looking at TCG tournament results, cybersex and mathmech were not an issue before. Um, this, again, seems to me to be the TCG banless design kind of saying, like, hey, we want decks to mostly be one archetype, and you know, circular, showing up in a lot of cyber stacks is a problem for that with cyber uh, archetypes in general. So, and again, whether you agree or disagree with that's a good thing is totally your opinion. I disagree. Um, I think this stifles innovation, and I think this ultimately causes decks to see less play simply for the fact that Konami wants them to be played pure, or at least Konami TCG. That seems to be what the uh, banlist here is valuing. I think Protoss is, a sim is hit for a similar reason, at least somewhat, um, but of course Protoss is also just better in a best of three, where you can actually call specific attributes once you know once your opponent is on. Um, I, I, there were also some people who said this is a Sword Soul hit, I think it was a bit of that as well, but I also think it is at least partially because Protoss tends to be played, uh, particularly in a lot of Halkdon pile decks. A lot of the pile decks uh, hits that we're going to see on the TCG list are, um, I think, remnants from Halkdon being very good. And I think to an extent Protoss is one of them, but I will also say that again, um, as a Sword Soul hit, obviously Sword Soul doesn't need to be in the TCG, but is Protoss too good in a best of three um, format like the TCG? Maybe, I don't know. I don't have enough experience to be able to say for certain, but uh, there is a decent chance that this hit is actually fine, uh, Protoss being at zero. Eva being at zero, I've already talked about. Uh, this is one of those... I haven't talked about Eva in particular, but um, I already talked about some other cards that are just legacy hits. I think Eva is one of those, right? Um, I'm trying to think in Master Duel... I don't think Drytron is majorly hit to any extent. Certainly, we have Eva legal as well as Benton, uh, and it's totally fine. I suspect Eva could be unbanned uh, in the TCG, and it would be 100% fine. Maxi, I already touched on quite a bit, but I do want to reiterate that I do think that Maxi being banned is a good thing. I don't think that Maxi should be in the format. However, what I'm challenging is the notion that Maxi being banned, that alone makes the TCG list um, quote-unquote better than the Master Duel list. But, um, I, again, I don't think I necessarily agree with that. While, again, I would like to see Maxi banned, um, I don't think that the Master Duel list is necessarily any worse simply because of this one difference here. Okay, Thunder Dragon Colossus is, I think, another remnant of that kind of Halkdon style deck, um, you know, uh, and or just being included in pile decks. And the reason that I suspect this is the, the, the why this card is hit is you see this talk a lot in how uh, TCG players talk about certain cards being in Master Duel, right? Whenever Colossus happens to show up, um, you'll see people say, oh, this card is so generic, how can this still be allowed? Um, it's just tacked on to the end boards of these generic pile decks. But really, let's think about what it takes to put Colossus in one of these pile decks. You either have to be playing a dedicated Thunder Dragon package, at which point part of your deck is a Thunder Dragon deck, and if you're a Thunder Dragon deck ending on a Thunder Dragon boss monster, would argue that even uh, under like purist versus generic standards, that's fine. But if you're, you know, again, referring to the interaction of um, not playing any Thunder Dragon cards at all, uh, you're talking about using a Nemesis Corridor. Nemesis Corridor is really only searchable by Cupid Pitch, and this is kind of something I've never really understood when people say that this card in particular, or, um, well, you can make this argument for other kind of pile deck cards, uh, and I will actually hear shortly, but to put Thunder Dragon Colossus in a pile deck, uh, and reliably be able to end on it, you gotta be searching the Nemesis Corridor off the Cupid Pitch. You're already in such a specific style of deck at that point that I don't really understand, or I guess really, I don't buy the argument that that's too generic. Like, I think that's like one case use of where you get to use Colossus uh, outside of in the Thunder Dragons. And, um... If you're going to argue that this is a Toss hit still, or that this is a Thunder Dragon hit, like, come on, Toss was, what, six years ago at this point? 
Colossus, again, is legal in Master Duel, and are Thunder Dragons even close to a problem? No, not even a little bit. Like, not even remotely. They've always been a very solid rogue engine and archetype that is able to exist because of Colossus being legal. Does Thunder Dragon do anything at all in the TCG with this band? Not from what I can tell, so... Uh, Kikolos being banned is different from Master Duel, but the same as the OCG. I think really what ended up happening with that is that uh, Konami, I guess, experimented with Murley being banned. I actually think that was a superior hit. Um, I think that Murley should be banned and Kikolos should be legal. I think, well, I don't know. To be fair, I haven't played the TCG version of Tier Elements like much at all, so uh, maybe that actually does have its own interesting play style. But um, I don't necessarily agree or disagree with the Kiklos 0-0 zero to zero hit. Uh, in that regard, I would need more experience to make a definitive statement. But I do think Kiklos being legal is fine, as long as Murley is banned. Again, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, people be like, How is Kiklos still legal in Master Duel? And it's like, because Murley is banned, and it's fine. Well, like, like, that's how. <laughs> so. Oh, Meow Meow Moon of Ban. This, this ban breaks my heart. Like... Come on, I, 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 this is also, to be fair, this card is at 1 in Master Duel, which I think is also totally unfair, but um, prank kids are fine. Like, it's totally fine. This card could be at 3, and I think it'd be fine. Scarecrow to 0, as quickly as it happened, was funny. <laughs> um, I'm pretty indifferent about this hit. I kind of think Soul Piercer is the hit and not Scarecrow, but um, Scarecrow to 0 ended up being fine. Heavy Foes Electrolyte banned. Why? 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 Why is this card banned? Uh, the reason it's banned is because I think much like Cyber Stacks, Pendulum decks often tend to be more pile-ish. Even like a Pendulum Magician deck is still playing like, at least in Master Duel, like a Valance engine uh, or a mini Kashira package. It's a lot of different archetypes blended together. I think Electrobite still being at zero is, again, I think for the same reason that Circular went to zero. It's not necessarily that Pendulum decks are a problem, that Electrobite needs to be at zero, it's that... Pendulum decks with Electrolyte Legal exist in a more pile kind of space, and that's not a space that Konami of TCG seems to want decks at all to exist. Uh, again, that's true of Circular and Cyber decks too. Uh, even though these decks are not only not a problem with these cards legal, but you could argue that the format, and or at least these uh, style of decks roles in the format is stifled because these cards are banned. And in my opinion, it's not even necessarily deserved, so... I don't know. I, again, I'm not a Pendulum player, so um, I'm not even like super passionate about this one in particular. But Electrolyte to Zero just doesn't make any sense to me unless you just simply don't want pile decks to exist. And again, I personally don't like that design philosophy. Uh, Elf to Zero, again, I've talked to actually about this one in particular, but this is also banned in the OCG as well. I think Elf is totally fine. Like, it's been proven, you know, in Master Duel that with Murley at zero, um, Elf does feel pretty fine. Now, I will say Elf is seeing a lot of play in particular in Super Heavy Samurai and Monodium right now. But also, you know, when it comes to Super Heavy Samurai, that needs to get hit in general. So, like, Elf is not the reason that Super Heavy Samurai is too good. Elf is also not the reason that uh, Monodium is tier one as well. Um, so, in that regard... I can I can see now in this meta more than in the past where Elf people say that Elf is too generically good, and when SP Little Light comes out, that might even be the case more so. Although to be fair, um, the interactions between Elf and SP are honestly fairly limited. I don't know. I think that Elf is pretty fine, but um, I can at the same time understand a little bit more now than I had in the past it being banned, but um, this isn't a particular TCG exclusive gripe, to be fair, because it is also banned in the OCG. Uh, curious the Light Sworn Dominion, I think this is a TCG exclusive hit. This is another one of those cards that, like, whenever it comes up in Master Duel, people are like, oh, Curious, how is this card still legal? And it's like, it's legal because it's fine. Like, this card doesn't do anything problematic in Master Duel, except unless you view the existence of pile decks as problematic then it does but are pile decks with curious oppressive in the master duel meta are they tier zero are they dominating ladder and tournament tops no not even remotely and for that reason um i think that it's totally fine for it to exist like 
I don't know. It, it's just, it's wild to me that, that a lot of people who play the TCG seem to really value deck diversity, but at the same time, hate the existence of pile decks. This is one of those cards that people are say, oh, it's too, it's too generic. It's like, you know, it's, it, it, it makes archetypes lose their identity, but it's not that archetypes lose their identity. Um, it's that the, the decks just don't see play without the help of stuff like Curious. Well, I mean, that's mostly true, I think, of like Electromite and Circular. Like, um, yeah, I don't think Electromite robs Pendulum decks of their identity by any means. And it's pretty clear that Pendulum decks just don't see as much play simply because this card doesn't exist. With Curious, I think it's different. I think Curious more helps a just more, I guess, archetype list deck. Just one that's, you know, even if it is using archetypal cards, it's so few of each of them that it's pretty much just all generic stuff. But again, I think it's fine for those style of decks to exist. I don't understand why the inherent existence of those decks is a problem. Um, we'll talk about that more when we talk about a board on here in a minute. I want to talk about Vert Anaconda first. Uh, I think with regards to Vert being banned, it's exactly that Vert and Red Eyes Dark Dragoon uh, can't coexist at the same time. Now, for a long time, people were making the argument that, oh, they need to ban Vert in Master Duel, even if Dragoon is also banned, because Vert is too generically good. Like, while it's legal, you'll just always play the DPE package, because why wouldn't you? Because Vert Anaconda is legal. Well, now Vert Anaconda has been legal, and decks have long since not played the DPE package by and large anymore. And indeed, where does Vert Anaconda even see play currently in Master Duel? Occasionally in Branded? Like, and that's a dedicated fusion deck, and Vert Anaconda is intended to help dedicated fusion decks. So, Again, I think that uh, this ends up being completely fine. While Dragoon is banned, I gotta throw in that caveat. Now, as far as that argument goes, of whether Anaconda or Dragoon should be legal, I am in the camp that thinks Dragoon is the problem. <laughs> like, I, I just don't understand the appeal of Dragoon. Well, I do understand the appeal of, of Dragoon. It's nostalgia, Dr uh, Dark Magician and Red Eyes. But I would rather have Vert Anaconda um, making, you know, more packages like the DPE engine splashable if decks want to play it, which again, decks by and large choose not to do that right now. Um, and just generally aiding in fusion strategies as opposed to the existence of one very specific, um, archetypal towers monster that also has a negate. Again, like, Dragoon is, in theory, the kind of card that people should hate. Um, uh, people don't like towers, people don't like negates, and Dragoon is both rolled into one, but, again, it's, you know, it's an archetypal sub-boss monster that's also got a lot of nostalgia behind it, so I can see why people end up liking it. Okay, uh, Mecha Fan and Beast Aurorodon. This is gonna be probably, like, the biggest example for me of a generic pile deck being 100% fine. Um, what do Aurorodon decks do in Master Duel right now that's problematic? Uh, the answer is nothing. Uh, this card existing in Master Duel is not even remotely close to a problem. And I remember when Halky Fibrex got banned, there, were, there was a vocal part of the community that was saying, you've got to ban Aurorodon too, you've got to ban Aurorodon too, because even without Hulk, if Aurorodon is eagle, uh, you can just use Tomahawk, and any two level 7s being the combo is way too good. You have to ban Aurorodon too. What are they thinking? And then here we are over a year later, and it's like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, it's actually just 100% fine. Like, Aurodon being legal in Master Duel, the Aurodon pile decks, you know, as somebody who's played one uh, relatively recently, uh, like within the last year or so, um, they're like they're, they're totally stopped by a single Ash Blossom, a single Imperm, a single Nib. Uh, Maxi heavily discourages going into the Aurodon line. And even if you go off with your Roared Online, that's not an auto win, right? Um, I've had matchups where, you know, I go off with my Roared Online and my opponent answers my board. And then, oh, I, I only have four cards left in my extra deck. And they're all just like random bits and pieces to a line that I can't execute anymore. Uh, so the deck has no follow-up. And I've also had situations where my opponent will do something as simple as make an Avermax using IP. And I realize, oh, I can't out that. Like, even if my combo does go all the way off and I'm successful, I actually just don't even play a way to out this. 
because I don't have room for it because of all of the space I have to dedicate towards my engine. So, yeah, I think Rodon is completely fine to exist. Um, it's not a problem, it's not too good. So why is it banned? Again, it comes down to there's this clear design philosophy with the TCG ban list of pile deck bad, 40 good card deck bad, generic deck bad. Everyone should be playing an archetype. Um, although I do think there is a bit of hypocrisy in this that we're going to see a little bit later in the list, but we'll get to that in a moment. Um, and I, I, I noticed that a lot of TCG players carry a similar mentality that... Even if they don't think a Rodon is too strong, it should still be banned, quote-unquote, on principle. Or, quote-unquote, because it's toxic. Or, quote-unquote, because it's too generically good. And it's like, what do these statements actually mean? They try to sound objective, right? That the existence of this card is just objectively a problem. But really, it's only a problem if you don't value generic decks. And that is all subjective. Again, if you don't think generic decks are a good thing... That's a valid opinion, and I understand why. Um, I just don't agree with you. And I also, at the same time, don't think it's a reason for a card to be banned. Like, I just think it's all about having more options. Again, players saying they value deck diversity, and then also saying that pile decks should not be allowed. Uh, Simorg, I think, is more of a burn-up hit. This could it has been legal in Master Duel, and it's fine. Uh, as long as the barrier statue is also banned, which it is. So, um, this is just a slow unhit, I think. Alright, what else do we have here? Um, they also took longer to ban Mystic Mind too, which I think is funny. Chicken Game, I don't have strong feelings. This is legal in Master Duel, but it's fine. But I understand why this is banned. Uh, it discourages, like, Turbo Draw, FTK style decks, which, to be fair, Chicken Game, again, isn't helping fuel in Master Duel right now. But, again, I don't have strong feelings about this one. Grass, on the other hand, I do. Grass is much like Aurorodon. Um, yet another one of those bands that to me is just simply discouraging um, more like generic graveyard turbo mill style decks. Not only that, but like I really don't like this band because I feel like the existence of grass in the format just encourages deck diversity. I think it's probably too strong to be at three. I think at, in Master Duel it could be at two and it would be fine. Um, maybe in a best of three exclusive format, this might end up being too good, but I don't know. I think at one it would be fine. I think it's mostly banned, again, not because it's too good, but because it encourages uh, more pile decks, which, again, it seems to me the TCG ban list has a bias against. Barrage is a slow end ban. I thought it was really funny the number of people who, when Barrage went to immediately to three in Master Duel, said... This is a problem. This is one of the dumbest sound hits I've ever seen. Uh, and I also saw this statement get thrown around a lot of, if you don't think this is a problem, it just means you didn't play in Zodiac format. Um, I didn't think it was going to be a problem. And here we are months later, and it's not. Zodiac Barrage being at 3 is 100% fine. Now, to be fair, uh, this is, I think, also a relatively recent change, if it is even changed, on the OCG list. And there it does seem to be a bit of a recent shift, particularly with the existence of Master Duel uh, being around, where um, Konami is a little more willing to use Master Duel as a test format for some of these uh, unbans like Barrage. So, eh, I don't know. I, I think this is a relatively slow one hit, but not as slow as some others. Which I also think it's funny, too, when people say that, like... Um, that uh, Master Duel is slow to, like, unban stuff, which they are. Uh, the rate at which they uh, take certain things off the ban list, I think, is too slow. But, like, more so, I guess, down here in limits. Like, look at Harpoor still being limited. We'll get to that later, but, like, this is a toss hit from well over six years ago. Like, come on now. Could definitely be changed. Um, what else do we have here? Pointer of the Red Lotus... It's not banned in Master Duel, but to be fair, in a best of three format, I understand it being banned. It's kind of weird to me that this is banned, but Dimensional Prison isn't, Anti-Spell Fragrance isn't. Other cards that you can side deck in uh, that turn games into non-games. I think side decking in general uh, leads to more non-games. And uh, yeah, Point of the Red Lotus is one of those cards that was guilty of that. I'm just kind of surprised to not see more of those on here. 
Um, okay. Global could come back and have a Halkus Band, but that's also true of OZG and Master Duel as well. Zen maybe isn't this legal in Master Duel and OCG? It it should be 100 percent fine. Hmm, I don't know. I this seems to be to me to be another slow unban. Invoker is kind of the same, but relatively more recent. Oh my god, okay, these two Arise Heart and Tomahawk. I have very strong feelings about these bands. <coughs> Let me take a sip of water first, though. So Arise Heart to zero. Being the only cashier I hit. Alright, let me let me say this, and this is gonna sound wild to a lot of people at first, but I'm gonna follow up this statement with other statements that'll make it make more sense. I think Arise Heart to zero is the single dumbest hit to cash Shira they could have done. Uh with Fender and Prosperity still being at three, I can't fathom how this is the card that's at zero and not other and other cards aren't being hit like here's the thing too and again i'm gonna this is something i've talked about extensively in the past but i'm gonna put on my i told you so hat here when cashew was about to come out of master duel i made a tweet about a rise heart in particular where i stated that i suspected that a rise heart would be completely fine in master duel it would not be problematic that cashew would not take over as a result of this card coming into the game and being legal and I had so many TCG players tell me that I was wrong, uh, that called me dumb, that said all Master Duel players were bad, and that my tweet was evidence. Here we are all these months later, and I've been wearing my I told you so hat the whole time because I've been right. A Rise Heart has been legal, and it's been fine. Now, it's been fine because of other hits, like Cash Your Fenrir and Pot of Prosperity, as I mentioned earlier. Um, those cards being at one, I think, are the good hits. I can't fathom how and or why those cards are still legal at three in the TCG. And that's actually an example of cards being unhit in the TCG that I think are super problematic that need to go to one. Now, I know that that's not a hot take. I know a lot of players, especially about Prosperity, will agree with me. But I also see a lot of people say that a Rise Heart being at zero is a good thing as well. But here is where I think the TCG list and this kind of mentality that generic pile decks are bad, archetypes good, is totally hypocritical. So how, stop me if you've heard this one before. There's too many good generic boss monsters like Appalooza and Boralode Savage Dragon. There needs to be more good archetypal boss monsters that do what the archetype cares about without just being Omni Negates or without having ridiculous protection effects. Guess what? That's what a Rise Heart is. That is literally exactly what a Rise Heart is. A Rise Heart offers Cashier decks an incentive to go into an archetypal boss monster. A Rise Heart, it does not have any negates, it doesn't have any protection. Uh, this card is really easy to out. And people are like, oh, you're just saying just draw the out. No, I'm not saying draw one very specific out. I'm saying there are so many outs to this card that you have a very good shot of happening to draw one that you probably already play, like Imperm or... I don't know, literally any effect that can destroy a monster, you can fucking smashing ground Arise Heart, <laughs> and that's fine! Like, again, I just, but here's the thing, and this is where I think the hypocrisy comes in, but Arise Heart banishes, and that's not fun, so that's why it's the problem, and it's like, I don't know, what do you, what do you want from archetypal boss monsters then? Because, again, what people say they want archetypal boss monsters that are strong, that have an incentive to go into it over generic options, but don't negate or have ridiculous protection, that's what a Rise Heart is. Um, so I don't know, I, I, I don't understand this ban, I don't understand TCG players wanting archetypes to be a thing over pile decks, but also being okay with this ban. Um, it just, it, it just, it just reeks of hypocrisy to me. Um, to me, I, I think this is a terrible hit. Speaking of terrible hits, oh my god, Galaxy Tomahawk is banned while Auroradon is also banned? Why? <laughs> Why is this card also at zero? Uh, that makes literally zero sense to me at all. 
What are you going to do with Tomahawk, with no Auroradon? Use two level 7s and play way hard into Nibiru to go into, what, a 4 material Appalooza? A 4k access code? Ooh. I, 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 why is this card banned? It doesn't, like, again, Tomahawk and Aurodon both are legal and Master Duel and are not a problem at all. Not even close to a problem. And I can already hear the comments that are saying, well, that's because Max C is banned. But there are so many things that aren't Max C that stop the combo line, such as a single Ash Blossom, a single Imperm, a Nibiru, Droll the vast majority of the time. And also, if we're making the argument that these need to be banned because Max C is also banned, are we now making the argument that Max C does, in fact, make keep combo decks in check because i thought we as a community had well established that maxi does not keep combo decks in check and that is also a reason to ban maxi which again to me is a bit of a hypocrisy um to keep cards that are generally disliked banned even if they're not a problem and i've always maintained that a card being disliked is not a good reason for it to be banned if we banned cards solely for the reason that people didn't like them we wouldn't have a game to play because people would always find a card to hate we could go all the way back to like 1999 ocg format and people would be like you gotta ban silver fang it's too op because you can equip it with mystic moon why even play hitatsui giant it's like again there will always be hated cards that's how the card games in general and especially this community work so no i don't think a card being disliked is a reason for it to be banned uh, i think that's a childish reason i think that's akin to saying well i don't like this so nobody should be allowed to even enjoy it it's like yeah again i think that's childish but that's just my opinion at the same time so dryden being at zero holy shit this card has been at one in master duel the whole time and it's been fine this card is at three currently in master duel and it's totally fine. This is another very, very slow uh, unhit. Much like Harpoor, as I touched on earlier, Toss Format was, what, six years ago at this point? This card is totally fine. There's no reason for it to be at one. Um, and I've, I've even seen some people say that, well, slow un cards being slow to get unhit is a separate issue. I don't think it is. Um, because I think Harpoor being at one does just completely limit uh, Orcus as a whole, but also a lot of the pile decks that like using Orcus to help feed them. I kind of suspect Harpoor at one might be yet another, oh, well, Orcus is good for a lot of pile decks and we don't want generic pile decks to exist. So. Which again, if you value that and like the TCG ban list as a result, that's valid. I don't value that and I think, again, that is such a point of distaste for me that not even Maxi being banned makes up for it. Again, for me personally. Dragon Wars being at 1, again, that's totally fine if they're not. I will say, I do actually like Collapse Serpent and Wyvern Burster being at 1, as opposed to Wyvern Burster just being banned. Uh, that, I think this is, these cards being both at 1, is the better Dragon Link hit. So, I do wish we would have gotten that. Oh yeah, the, the Danger cards being at 1. Sukunoko and Jackalope being at 1. I remember asking Twitch chat, why the hell are these cards limited? And the response that people gave was Dark Worlds. And I was just like, well, not, why not just ban Silva? And a lot of people were like, yeah, I don't understand why they don't just ban Silva. But in preparing to make this video and thinking about the list and looking it over, again, I go back to the whole, oh, TCG doesn't want pile decks to exist. And I think that's the real reason these two cards are one instead of Silva just being at zero. Uh, these are at three in Master Duel, and it's completely fine. Uh, the pile decks that they enable aren't even close to a problem. Dark World does exist, but, you know, again, it's completely fine to exist. It, it's not overtaking the format by any means. And, again, if you think that they shouldn't exist, it's that it's not fine because pile decks shouldn't exist. That's just, like, your opinion, man. <laughs> I don't know what else to say at this point. Um, yeah, ban Silva, put these at three. These are completely fine. Uh, Sun Avalon hits were interesting. Dryas to one I think is good. Hero to one is a little weird, but overall fine. Striker Dragon to one. I think, I do, I will say I do like the way that they hit Dragon Link in, uh, TCG as opposed to, uh, Master Duel just banning Wyvern Burst, right? I don't like that hit, uh, in Master Duel. So, I, I like that more, I will say. 
Reasoning and Monster Gate being at one in TCG is a little head scratching to me. Um, I suspect maybe the, they're at one because Max C is banned, but I also think they're probably just totally fine. Magical Mid Breaker Field. This card is completely fine. I see this card at the start of your main phase one or two. Okay. During each player's main phase one, monsters on the field can be destroyed by their opponent's card effects. Also, another player can target monsters your opponent controls. You cannot. Why? Why is this limited? I I I can't even fathom this. Like. Yeah, this, this, this is completely fine. This doesn't do anything in, in at all in Master Duel. Totally fine. Fury Launcher to 1, I think, is a slow unhit. Uh, again, I've seen people say, no, 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 no. Launcher's at 1 because Maxi is banned. So, again, are we saying that Maxi keeps uh, combo decks in check? Because I don't think it does. Uh, I think the Master Duel and OCG formats are evidence that it doesn't. And people use that argument as a reason for Maxi to be banned. So, by that argument, why is Launcher not fine to be at 3? So, I, I, and then that's actually, that's, that one is me genuinely asking why. If there is an argument there, I'm not seeing it. And I could be missing it. So, I am always open to the possibility of being wrong. Definitely, for sure. Uh, what else do we have here? We're kind of coming towards the end of it. A lot of these hits are either the same or, I think, fine. Second Light being at one is a little weird. I will say, the TCG Unbanning Ib is a really cool unlimit and is something I do like. That the TCG list did. Um, oh my god, but then we come down here to just a completely ridiculous hit. Red Rose Dragon. Are you fucking kidding me? Red Rose Dragon at one? Why? <laughs> Again, it's because of Halkdon, but like, how slow do you have to be to unhit things? And also, like, even as a Halkdon hit, why actually? This is like, this is, I think, one of the worst cards on the list um honestly i think tomahawk being at zero at the same time uh, as word on being zero is also up there but i this is embarrassing like like I, I don't know what other word to use i think red rose dragon being at one on your ban list is frankly embarrassing uh and embarrassingly bad decision horrible awful in my opinion Naturia sacred tree being at one is really really weird to me i understand that it's a naturia runic hit but like I don't think the Naturia engine needs to be hit at all. <laughs> I think if that deck is too good, it's probably... If it's too good, which it's not. If it was too good, which it's not, it would be Runic elevating Naturia, but it's not too good. Um, <laughs> I want to make sure that I'm emphasizing that point. Um, this card could be at 3, with Fountain being at 2. Uh, they can coexist with those numbers, and they're 100% fine. Uh, Gamma at 1, I actually do like this, much like... Uh, Called by at one? Where is called by the grave? Wait, where's that card? Is it at one in the TCG? Did I just skip over it? Oh, here it is. Yeah, I did. It's right here. Uh, called by and Gamma being at one. I actually do like these hits. Um, and I do think that these are hits that make sense with Maxi being at zero. Uh, same with Crossout being at three and also not being here on the limited list. If Maxi is at zero, I also think that's completely fine. And semi limits, I don't really have much to say about these. Uh, yeah, they're just kind of like slowly unhitting some stuff. Lightning Storm being semi-limited also does make uh, at least a little bit of sense in a best of three format. So there you have it. That's kind of my overall thoughts on the TCG. Again, I don't blanket hate it. There are things about this list that I do like, and we even started with quite a few of them. But there are some things on here that I do think are just pretty awful decisions, in my in my opinion. Um, again, regardless of whether you think a Rodon should be legal or not, which I think it should, I think it's fine to exist, a word Tomahawk also being banned is just embarrassing, in my opinion. Same with Red Rose Dragon um, still being at one. Like, what? A, come on, what is this? Come on now. Um... But, again, that's just, like, my opinion, man. So, uh, thank you for watching all of this, if you did. If you actually listened to me rant about the TCG list for, what, almost an hour? Holy shit. Thank you so very much. Uh, that support is very, 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 very uh, special. It really is. If, you, if you're actually willing to listen to me blab for this long, um, I really, really, really appreciate that. But... I'm done blabbing now. Uh, let's just go ahead and move now to the outro. Oh, but also before we do, definitely do let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, as always, ever, as I said with the TCG, uh, not TCG, with the tier list video rather as well, uh, feel free to disagree. Discourse is fun, but rudeness is not. Just don't be mean about it. But anyway, uh, let's move now to our outro.
Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video, that means a lot to me. Uh, it's also a great way to support the channel, so thank you very much for in that way as well. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, uh, like the very special patrons that I am thanking here, uh, you can do so by checking out some of the links in the description, one of those goes to the Patreon, uh, where you can join these fine folk and support the channel that way. I do post daily content over on Patreon, so uh, you do get something for support there and if you're interested I also have a coaching tier option uh, as well details again will be on patreon in the link below uh, also in the description linked below is my twitch page where I stream uh, a few times a week you can go ahead and check that out follow or subscribe over there uh, if you ever want to catch me live uh, you'll also find my second YouTube channel if you feel like subscribing over there to watch some of the twitch VODs as well as some additional uh, non Yu-Gi-Oh related content that I make over there. Uh, again, any of those links you want to check out is all a great way uh, of supporting. But again, even if you don't do that, just watching was also a fantastic way to support. And once again, I have to thank you so very much. But uh, in any case, this is Hexlex. I'm going to be signing out and I'm hoping you have a fantastic day.